It has been a while since I made a video on my personal five. Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode with me, the Omega Enthusiast. This episode will be episode 4 of my personal five. If you have not watched episode 1 to 3, there will be a link at the end of this video to take you to that playlist. I've been collecting watches for the past two decades. I selected another five of my personal timepieces to discuss in this video. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Those of you who are my longtime Instagram follower will probably have seen all five of these watches. Let me go through each piece starting from the earliest production year. Please note that creating one of these videos takes up a lot of my time. Your support is vital to this channel by hitting on that thumbs up button below. I would also like to thank off my Patreon and buy me a coffee supporter. Watch number one will be my 1938 Tre Taché Omega Center Second. Unfortunately, I do not have the CK case model number for this watch. When I get the extract from Omega one day, I'll make sure to include the CK model in the description box below. Since it is my watch, I am in no hurry to order the extract. Most importantly, this watch is all original and correct after my thorough examination. The original solid stainless steel case has a unique rose gold cap bezel. It is an actual layer of solid gold over the steel. The majority of 1930s vintage wristwatches are made very small. The case I mentioned on this watch measures 30.6 mm in diameter excluding the crown by 38 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 8.8 mm thick without the crystal and 10.9 mm if I include the current crystal. The crown is 6 mm wide and 2.6 mm thick. Case lug width is 16 mm. The low dome acrylic crystal does not take a metal tension ring. The original crown is unsigned and hollow as it does not take a gasket. Instead, the case tube has a gasket inserted inside. The factory original finished dial is attractive and nicely aged. The luminous on the, the uh, lollipop hands are aged and darkened. Notice the Omega logo on the dial is slightly squeezed compared to later models, but this only applies to certain older dials from the 1930s. Tray Taché is referring to the three slots on the case back. The slots are there uh, for you to unscrew the case back with a case opening tool. The case takes a metal uh, flat ring gasket and inside is a manual wine Omega caliber 23.4 movement. The service movement is running strong and accurately. The movement holder ring and the pressure ring will secure the movement in place. The small case size fits my wrist perfectly. The trick to make a small watch appear more prominent on the wrist is to wear it with a metal bracelet. The rivet type bracelet has a unique class, but I'm not too fond of the expandable link as they will pinch the hair on my wrist. The second piece that I have here is a 1939 Omega watch. The case model on this one is CK2099, first introduced in 1939. It's a mid-sized watch, which again fits my wrist perfectly. I love the black with the copper index combination on this factory original dial. Makes it strikingly stunning under the sun. I think this light brown strap or a tan color strap matches the watch very well.
The case measures 32.6 mm in diameter, excluding the crown by 38 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 6.4 mm without the crystal, and 9.6 mm including the current crystal. The crown measures 5.6 mm wide and 1.2 mm thick. The case lug width measures 18 mm. CK2099 takes a low dome acrylic crystal. The original crown on a 1930s watch will most likely be unsigned. CK2099 is a three-piece case with a removable bezel and a snap-on case back. This watch does not take a crown or case gasket. Snap open the case back and inside you have a fully serviced caliber 30T manual wind movement. The two case screw are there to keep the movement intact. The third piece will be similar to the previous piece, but a decade younger and a larger watch. This case model is OT2180, first introduced in 1941. This watch that I have here is from 1949, which is the final production year of this case model. I've mentioned in many of my videos that what these two character abbreviation means. CK refers to solid stainless steel, and OT is referring to solid 18K gold. When I first started collecting watches, I'm not too fond of cases with these thin straight lugs. But as time passes, I begin to gain interest and now own a few timepieces with this type of case lugs. The crown on this watch is signed. A good condition watch crown will make hand winding less challenging. OT2180 takes a low dome acrylic crystal. Since I am a collector of Omega 30T2 watches, I had to buy this timepiece when I first saw it. With the addition of this attractive dial, how can I pass on such a beautiful piece? The case measures 35mm in diameter, excluding the crown by 42mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 5.3mm without the crystal and 9.3mm with the current crystal. The crown is 4.6mm wide and 1.6mm thick. Case lugged width is 18mm. Inside the snap-on case back, you have a clean Omega 30T2 manual wind movement. Timepiece number 4 is like wearing a miniature clock on the wrist. Why do I say that? Because of its Roman numeral dial can be commonly seen on a lot of wall clocks. The case model on this one is CK2750. You can learn more about this watch by clicking on the link above. I've made a video in this, uh, on this specific case model a while back. According to its movement serial number, this timepiece dates to 1953. The case diameter on this watch measures 35mm, excluding the crown by 44mm from lug tip to lug tip. Inside the snap-on case back, you have a clean Omega Caliber 266 17 jewel manual wind movement based on the legendary Caliber 30T2. I initially had this watch on a metal bracelet, but I think a genuine leather strap looks pretty good on it as well. Finally, watch number 5 is my 1958 Omega Seamaster under the case model KO2990, also known as a Seachero, as it shares the same case as the Ranchero. KO refers to a two-tone type case, such as gold-plated or gold cap over steel. 
What I like about this timepiece is its rose gold case and those striking set of hands. I've made a video in the past on this case model as well. If you're interested to learn more about it, please click on the link above. The case diameter on this watch measures 36.4 millimeters, excluding the crown by 44.4 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. 36 millimeter diameter is probably the largest that I wear. Anything larger would be too big on my small wrist. If you have made it to this point, I would like to thank you for watching this video. And if you have not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button and drop me a comment down below. Make sure to hit on that thumbs up, it helps with the algorithm and helps this video trend a little better right here on YouTube. Let me know in the comment section down below which is your favorite piece. Thank you for your continued support and I will see you guys in the following video.